The fall of the Separatist leader Count Dooku at the hand of Jedi Knight Anakin Skywalker marked the beginning of the end of an arduous war. Whilst the Jedi Order believed that the destruction of droid Commander General Grievous would be the key to the end of the war, Supreme Chancellor Palpatine had blinded them all by seducing the promising Jedi Knight Anakin Skywalker to the dark side of the Force, pledging him the ability to save his allegedly dying wife Senator Padma Amidala of Naboo. By the time the Jedi discovered the real identity of Palpatine, it was too late. Master of the Order Mace Windu, who had shown continuous criticism towards Anakin, was ultimately betrayed by the Jedi Knight, and in a show of Sith strength, Palpatine unleashed a torrent of Force lining, and declared that his power was unlimited. But what if Palpatine had only limited power? How would Anakin react? Would he have doubts about joining the Sith? All of those questions are about to be answered. Anakin stood in the vicinity of Palpatine, who was engulfing Mace Windu in a wave of Sith fury, having chosen to cut off the Jedi Master's hand. The Sith Lord began to boast about his powers, when he curiously remarked that they were limited. It soon dawned upon Anakin that the powers of the Sith were just as restricted as the Jedi, except that the path to attaining it was much easier. Watching as Windu began to lose his resistance and balance, Anakin took a step forward, which Palpatine thought was to mutilate the Jedi, but dropping out of the window, Anakin used one of his hands to hold him in the air. Palpatine scowled at this display of weakness, something that would not be tolerated way to become his apprentice, and knocking Anakin's grip from Windu, he ordered him to bow before him. Outside of the office, Anakin's hesitation had most certainly saved Windu's life, as he held on with one hand to the ledge of the building. The Master of the Order began to lose his grip, still feeling massive amounts of pain from the Sith's attack, and calculating his fall, he landed perfectly on top of a police speeder. Rolling onto one of the pavements, Windu looked despairingly at Palpatine's office in the distance, but this gave him an idea. Using his remaining hand to pull a passing speeder out of the traffic, he put his head down and searched towards the apartment of Senator Amidala. Out of the corner of his eye, he could still see Palpatine and Anakin arguing, and knew he had enough time. Docking just outside of the Senator's veranda, the Naboo politician rushed out in surprise, but Windu has no time for pleasantries, and escorts him to his speeder, setting his course for Palpatine's office. Anakin was being presented as Darth Vader, and with his first mission to destroy the Jedi Temple's inhabitants, Windu and Padme dived through the open window, much to the shock of the Sith. Palpatine tried to push his apprentice out of the doorway, but he had already seen the Padme enter the room, and was in a great amount of pain from the fall. Palpatine hid his internal disgust, and knew he could not execute Order 66 as he had planned, until Anakin was fully engrossed in the dark side, so he decided to take the speeder the Jedi left behind, and travel to the Senate building. With Masamida and two of his guards guiding him into the Senate pod, the Sith Lord addressed the remaining Senators and declared that the Jedi had attempted to assassinate him, then placed a bounty on all of those who were seen supporting them. The mixed reaction from the Senators was a surprise to Palpatine, but what he didn't know was that Senator Garner had been told about the truth behind Palpatine, when Windu had made his visit to Padme's apartment, and yet warned all of his allied Senators. After the Senate meeting, Bail Organa is soon informed by one of Padme's guards that she was headed for the Grand Republic's medical facility, but that Anakin was nowhere to be found. Palpatine had made use of a resident shapeshifter to confuse Anakin on his journey to the medical center, and guiding him into Coruscant's landing platform, Anakin soon realizes the deception, but he is stunned by two royal guards. Padme had been confused when Anakin veered off in front of her, but this was soon taken over by physical pain, and Bail Organa quickly carried her into the medical center. Whilst the medical droids tell Padme's birth of her children, the events on other worlds such as Utapau have been much less dramatic. After Jedi Master Obi-Wan Kenobi had killed General Grievous, he had been leading his 212th attack battalion to a successful victory over the Separatists, until he received an incoming transmission from fellow Jedi Master Mace Windu. The council member was unlike anything that Obi-Wan had seen, and clutching his broken hand, he ordered for all of the Jedi to stay away, until the bounties from their heads had been lifted. Obi-Wan turned to the holo projector inside of the communications unit, and in front of him, the hologram of Palpatine appeared to broadcast the Jedi, becoming new enemies of the Empire. The Jedi Master's thoughts soon turned to Anakin, who he knew was close to the Supreme Chancellor, and asking Cody to try and find him, his signal was nowhere to be found. 
Immediately preparing his ship for the journey to Coruscant, the Jedi Master entered into a hyperdrive docking ring when he sees his radar being filled with activity, and with his astromech, they swerve to avoid the incoming turret fire. Soon seeking help from his clone troopers on the ground, Republic gunships rise from the surface to fend off the attackers, but this was a sign that the war had not finished with the death of Grievous. That is it for part 1 of What If Palpatine Had Limited Power. If you'd like to see a part 2 soon, please like this video, turn on that notification bell, click that subscribe button on this channel, as well as on my other channel What If Films. And as always, leave a comment on what if you'd like to see next, and how I can improve my videos. Thank you all very much for watching, and see you next time.